I've got a, a word that I feel that is significant for us in the season. I feel that uh, I, I feel the weight and the gravity of it um, even now, just as I'm as I'm standing here and in preparation, I was feeling the weight and the gravity of it. Uh, just just in the presence of God, it was so powerful, and I, I believe that this is a time. Uh, here and now uh, to really take notice of what God is speaking to us individually, but also to take notice of what God's speaking through uh, preachers and people that, that get up and speak at this time, because there is, there is a trend go, uh, th- going at the moment where a lot of people are talking about the fear of the Lord. They're talking about holiness. They're talking about travailing prayer, which means to pray the heart of God, intercession. There's an increase of a call to to prayer. We've been talking about this quite a bit at Encounter, but I, I just want to <laughs> kind of gloss over it again because this, this is a global trend actually. Like everyone seems to be talking about intercession, about prayer, about travailing prayer, which is to pray the heart of God, about holiness, about, uh, you know, give it full surrender and full submission of everything that we are and everything that we have to the Lord. And so tonight I want to speak on uh, the fear of the Lord. It's not the sexiest message, but I believe that it's a word that we need to hear. And so that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, So we're going to start in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, and uh, we'll get that up on screen. It says, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. This is a scripture uh, written in Corinthians that the, uh, the Apostle Paul wrote. And, and basically, this, according to Paul, this is the only way that we, this is the, uh, this is the only way that we can produce holiness in our life. The only way that holiness can be produced is through purifying ourselves from everything that contaminates our body and our spirit out of reverence for God. And so I, I felt to, to speak on this tonight because I believe that we're in a significant time. We're in a time where, uh, you know, our schools, our kids, our youth are being attacked in terms of their identity and what they should believe and what they shouldn't believe and what they can say and what they can't say. We, like every generation, is 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 under that as well. There's there's this uh, attack on free speech, on uh, be, like value systems in terms of Christian values, biblical worldviews. There's an attack on it, and it seems to be that like more than just words. Like actually, there's uh, there's reality to this, and you can. See say something on social, at one point you could say something on social media and get destroyed for it, but it's starting to happen more and more in the, like, in day-to-day life as well. And and there seems to be the suppression of what we can and can't say. And 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 what I uh, believe at this time is, is that there's obviously an attack on, on these types of things, but actually at the same time, there is a deeper call from God for us to pray intercession, deeper relationship with God, deep worship, strengthening ourselves in God like David did. You know, when David was rejected and uh, his, his, uh, the army around him had turned on him, he, he was at the lowest of the low points. He separated himself. He went away and he strengthened himself in the Lord. And this is a time where what, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, uh, we, we need to find that place, that quiet place with God to strengthen ourselves in the Holy Spirit, strengthen Strengthen ourselves in our relationship with God. And, and in the process of that, we are strengthened to withstand what is to come. And not only is there a call to these things, but a call to holiness, a call to righteousness, and I believe a call to fear the Lord again. You know, if you don't fear the Lord, you won't purify yourself or deal with issues in your life. And only He is holy. Only Jesus is holy. He's the one that purifies us. He's the one 
that brings healing to uh, our, our lives. He's the one that purifies. He is the, and outside of Jesus, we are not purified. And the contamination and destruction of this world will not serve us. It will not serve our body and spirit well. So therefore we are in need of a healthy fear of the Lord in this nation. And so a fear of the Lord, what, like what is fear? Because fear is bad, right? Well, in this context, fear is to honour, respect, have reverence for God and who He is. It also means to have awe and submission to the person of God. So we in this time are being called, I believe, to a deeper revelation for every generation of what it means to fear the Lord. And in that process, allowing the Holy Spirit to purify us from the things of this world that are contaminating our body and our spirit so that we can perfect holiness out of reverence of God. We cannot do it alone. See, I believe that we've preached love well as the body of Christ, but not fear. Because love is good and fear is bad, right? But not this kind of fear. We have preached love well. We've preached the gospel in terms of Jesus loves you. There is grace, no matter what you've done. God is is, is wanting to draw is drawing near to you, and and uh, you you know you can experience a relationship with Jesus, and and His uh, what He did on the cross is sufficient for everything that you've ever done. And and we talk about this, and that is great. And when people are in a low place, we need to share the love of God with them. But We cannot share half the gospel. We must share with people the full truth, the full gospel, which is not just to receive and accept the love of God, but also to repent. And repentance is what allows the work of the Holy Spirit to purify us. It is through repentance that we actually receive salvation. It's the recognition, you know what? I, I haven't done it all right. I've, I've stuffed it up. I've made some mistakes. I'm, I'm, I've, I've done some dumb things. And I am in need of a saviour. I am in need of a better way. I'm in need of another way that is not the way I've been doing it. And through that recognition, we come to repentance And in that, a healthy fear of the Lord, the mightiness and the bigness of our God, how He can shift and move anything. He's he's not just the God that came to earth as Jesus to die for our sins. He's actually also the conqueror. He's the lover and the conqueror. He conquered sin and death for us. He has called us to be victors with Him, to conquer, to expand His kingdom in this world. See, I, at times we can preach the love of God so much that we miss whole sections of the Bible, missing whole aspects of Christianity, which actually is to live a yielded life where there is nothing we wouldn't sacrifice because He first sacrificed for us. And in that place, we start to realise that that our agenda doesn't matter so much. Like our, our preference doesn't really even rank on the scale of what's important. And I believe God, lo- you know, God loves us. He's given us giftings. He's given us dreams. And we've preached that well that God has set you apart. You know, there's a, uh, a, you know, He's uh, got a plan and a future for you and, and all this kind of stuff. And what's your dream and partner with God and that and blah, blah, blah. But, but it's not just that. Ultimately, it's the dream that's been imparted to you by God. It's those are the assignments that He's given us. And so it's the Word of God for us that we're then being obedient to not just these big, nice dreams that we want to go off and achieve. Come on, God, let's go. 
But God's like, no, I've, give, I've, I've got this for you. I've got that for you. I've got a great, a wonderful life for you, but actually I've got assignments for you. And there is enjoyment and fulfillment and purpose in that place. This is who we are called to be. We're called to live a yielded life. And I I recognise that this isn't the easiest message to hear, but it's the truth. And there is freedom in that place. If we could set ourselves free, then do do you think we wouldn't have worked that out by now? It's only Jesus that sets us free, His way. And so we sacrifice, we yield our way for His way. Our preferences for His his, uh, will for our life. We surrender our lives to Him and then He entrusts us with our life to work it out, work out our salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. The love of God preached without fear of God produces a hyper grace gospel and a powerless generation. We are called to be a victorious generation. Every generation represented here, we're called to be a victorious generation in Christ. We are called to that. And to live in that victorious place, we partner with God, but we yield our will for His. We surrender what I would prefer to do what God has asked of me in this time. If He says stay, I'm staying. If He says go, I'm going. If He says do, I'm doing. What is it that God has placed on your life? He's saying, do this, go here, stay here. Just persevere a little bit longer. Okay, (laughs) what is it that God is saying to you in this time? How can you be obedient to Him in this time? A hyper grace gospel says, you know what, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter what you'll do tomorrow. Doesn't matter what you'll do right now. All good. There's grace. Jesus loves you. It's all, it's all fine. But that's half the gospel. That's half the truth. That's a hyper grace. And it, it, it leads to a powerless generation. And here's why. Because we, it, it leads to a generation of people believing that all we need is the love of God with nothing else. And then what happens is we, we think we've received salvation, but we never step into the freedom that is in Christ Jesus. We never step into the fullness of life that God promised us. We never step into that fullness of life, that place of freedom, because the freedom comes in Him. Through the purification of our lives, through the dealing with, dealing with issues in our lives. We've all got them. We've all got some situations. We've all got stuff. And the faster that we realise, you know what? My way is not really working out that way, like very well. And Jesus, I surrender this for what you have for me, the better off we all are. Because the power comes in the authority that Jesus has given us. And to step into that authority, to step into that power, we must recognise that surrender comes first. So the surrender comes, then the purifying of our lives, and then the power of God works all the more through us. Jesus did not die so you could live a comfortable life. Sorry, not sorry. That's just the truth. If you want to live a comfortable life, don't be a Christian. That's just the truth. But it's not that comfortable not being a Christian either because you're living in powerlessness there too. So the issue is really, what did Jesus die for and how do we step into that? To embrace the love of God and to repent is what we're called to. The love of God preached without true repentance produces powerlessness. See, the only church that Jesus says He will come back for is only one. And it is not necessarily a relevant church. It's not necessarily a community-based church. It's not necessarily a church that has great leadership, although great leadership is good. What Jesus says He will come back for is 
a holy church without spot or wrinkle. So how can we live in that place of holiness? Because we're not perfect. How do, how do we live in that place? How do we live a life of holiness and righteousness, of consecration to the Lord? How do we do that? How do we become that holy church? Because I'm not perfect. I don't know about you. I'm definitely not perfect. I've, stu- I've stuffed up. I didn't become a Christian and then live perfectly after that. I've made some mistakes. Every single one of us has. So how do we become that holy church? I believe that it is when we as a people choose to live our lives in complete surrender to God, keeping short accounts on the things that have gone wrong, working out our salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord, which means that each step we take, each decision we make, we're working things out with God and we're moving forward in relationship with Him with fear and trembling before the Lord, with respect and honour and and awe and submission to who God is. We work out our salvation from that place. Paul says, our salvation matures through the fear of the Lord in that Scripture. So that is the only thing that produces holiness in our life. To come to a place of letting ourselves be purified of everything that contaminates our body and our spirit, which means that there are some things that we're doing, some things that we're saying that aren't that beneficial and they need to be dealt with. There are some things that are definitely sin and we definitely need to deal with them. The thing is, what is God saying to you now and will you be obedient to it? Maybe He's been tapping on your heart going, hey, you need to stop smoking. Hey, hey, you gotta stop vaping. That's not, that's not good for your body. This isn't t- turning out very well for you. Hey, you know, you've got a, uh, the, this situation here with the constant lying. You've got to deal with that. That's going to cause this and this and this issue. And God's speaking to you. He's like, hey, this, this is something you need to deal with. And you're just ignoring it and going, hey, I'll, like, I just, just another day. Like the lies are getting me out of stuff. It's helping me. Like this lie helps me get favour with these people. And this lie helps me uh, not get in trouble with these people. And we're choosing the things that Jesus said not to do to benefit us as a benefit it's it's to benefit us as our preference we're choosing the preference many times but the manifestation of holiness is not preference the manifestation of holiness in our lives is obedience when we are obedient to what God is saying in his word and to us which the two should align, by the way, then we die to ourselves, our agenda, our way, and we take up our cross and we take up His way. That's who He's called us to be. See, the fear of the Lord, I believe, is received in a couple of different ways. One, it could be taught, that we learn it through the Word of God, through revelation, but it's also caught. You know, I I wanna be friends with people like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like Pastor Rent's message this morning, powerful, embracing the fire. It's actually on theme. Like uh, this message I'm preaching is on theme to that because I I wanna be friends with people like that that would stand when no others would stand, that would decide, like, I don't care if I get thrown into that fiery furnace, I'm standing for the Word of God. I'm not worshipping any idols. I'm not doing anything that everyone else is doing because I know who God is and I will stand for that. And I will not compromise based on my preference. I will move forward in obedience. This is who God's called us to be, to be obedient. And I, like, I'm gonna be honest, like being obedient is hard. Like it's not ideal most of the time. But the truth is that the short-term benefit of, moving, of operating in preference does not outweigh the long-term benefits of operating in obedience to God. Because as we operate in obedience to God, the blessing 
The promises of God flow into our life. We remain in a place of freedom when, when life kind of catches on to us and there's like this yuck stuff that comes around us and we, like we're contaminated by, by lies and deceit and, and, and depressing thoughts and negative, negative people and all this stuff that can just feel so awful that can come around us when we get into that place. We give it to God, we deal with it, we keep short accounts, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord, we move forward. We're obedient to God, we repent quickly. That's what short accounts means, repent quickly, deal with it quick. And, and, and in that place, we remain sweet. God purifies our lives, He purifies our hearts, He purifies our minds. And let me tell you, you know, like all it takes is 24 hours. Like, Something happens, maybe you, you lie, maybe you do cheat, maybe you do something that you that it just gives the ick, you know? And you leave it for long enough, it just starts to grow and, and increase in our lives. It starts to feel worse and worse and worse until eventually we become numb to this stuff. But the longer we leave it, the harder it is to deal with. So just deal with it quick. The moment it happens, even if it's a, a habit that's happening for you every day or couple, every hour, whatever it is, just deal with it the moment that it happens. Keep short accounts with God and start to move forward in that place. So what does God say is holy for you, for us? If you take nothing else from my message today, it's this. When you leave this place, what is God saying to you is no longer okay for you to do or say. What is God saying in your life is unholy, is unrighteous, is contaminating you, is destroying you that you need to stop, turn away from it and move forward in the other direction. What is God speaking to you about in this time? Because God is calling us to be holy, to be a standard in our generations, to be set apart by God. Like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, no matter what would come at us, to be people that would stand no matter what. You know, I've done quite a bit of research into the Jesus revolution and it was before my time, but... Uh, from people that have spoken about it, that were part of it, and from what I, I've been able to see, what, what people all seem to agree on is that the Jesus revolution emphasised Father God. It's about the love of God coming upon people and people being, becoming impassioned by who Jesus was. They were getting baptised and getting saved and thousands and thousands and thousands of people and there were other things that, that spurred it off here and there out of the Jesus revolution, but it was largely about Father God. And the words, as, as I was thinking about this, the words that God spoke to Bridie and I at the beginning of this year just echoed through my mind. And even just to think about it, I feel the weight of the anointing right now. I felt that God said, because I, I watched the Jesus Revolution. Anyone watch the Jesus Revolution movie? When I watched that, I just, I broke down in tears. I was like, God, do it again. God, do it again. Like I felt this drawing of like, God's gonna do it again. He's gonna come in like a big way like that again. And I thought, well, what's it gonna look like? And at the beginning of this year, and this is just my experience, but Bridie and I felt that what God was saying was, I'm coming again, but when I come, where will I find your hearts? And the thing is that some of us, we claim with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, but through our actions, our heart is in another place. That through our actions and what we prioritise and what we choose to, pref to, to go with in terms of our preference, that speaks the truth of where our hearts are actually at. So where is your heart tonight? Where is your heart really? Is it in the gym and everything you're doing there? Is it in your career, the entrepreneurial ventures that you're pursuing, business? Like all these things are good things, I understand. 
But if your heart is there, that's where your treasure will be found. When God comes again in whatever move, whatever thing that happens, I want to be in a place where my heart is already fully surrendered to Him. I'm ready. I want to be ready for whatever is to come. So where will God find your heart? I believe, this is just me, but I believe that the next move will emphasize a holy fear of God. And that's based on things that I've seen around the place, different churches, different conferences, different people speaking on this. There seems to be an increase like a lifting of the bar, a lifting of the standard to go, hey, I'm calling you deeper. I'm calling you as a generation deeper. I, I, I'm, I'm calling you in a deeper place of relationship, a deeper place of worship, a deeper place of prayer than ever before. I believe that the next move will be really based or emphasise, sorry, on the holy fear of God. Generations of people that would be set apart like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, that would stand when no others would stand, that would choose to be purified, that would choose to be uh, fully surrendered to the will of God, to surrender our will, our preference, our desires to what God's got for us. I believe God's calling us into that place and He's reestablishing this as a key for us to understand, where is your heart? Where is your heart? Why don't we all stand for a moment? We're ending the, we're gonna end the service a little bit early, but I wanna do something together. Let's just get that, uh, that, that instrumental worship playing as well in the background. Why don't you close your eyes in this place? See, I, I believe that this word isn't just something for us to hear and let it tickle our ears and just get it turned down a little bit and, and to not walk out of this place any different. I believe that actually what God's calling us to is to make some changes in our life make some priority shifts to die, just to get a bit deader, die a little bit more, get rid of some stuff. And I wanted to create a space right now. I'm just gonna pray in just a moment. I wanna, but I wanna create this space here for you in this auditorium. You can go anywhere you want in the auditorium, find a space for you to just pray, to seek God, to worship Him in this place. And I, I was listening to this revivalist, this historian on revival, and he was saying that when they talk about prayer and intercession in most parts of the Bible, you can't really separate worship and prayer from, from, from uh, you can't really separate them because they're meant to go together. They're made to come be, be intertwined. There's meant to be worship on our hearts and praise for God as we're, as we're praying and we're entering into this place of, of deeper prayer. And so in this place right now, I'm gonna get the music taken up soon. Find a place. I'm gonna pray and then find a place in the auditorium to seek God for yourself. Because when this next move comes or when tomorrow comes, like it's the thing for now, not this wafty thing in the future. Where is God gonna find your heart? Where is your heart now? He's a jealous God. He's after your heart in this place. I'm gonna pray and then just leave this place open for you to seek God. I believe some people need to do business with God. I want you to just go into a place of prayer and worship with Him. We're gonna leave this place open for it. And if you wanna, don't wanna do that, after I pray, you can just hang out in the foyer. We're just gonna close the doors though and keep this place just focused. But before we do that, I wanna tell you a testimony. We, we did this night 
few Fridays ago for the first time and we played worship and we were praying. And in that place, as I was praying and I was seeking the Lord, I had this amazing encounter with God where I felt it completely, it's like my whole body started to become warm and I had tingles go from my head to my toes. And I felt the love of God hit me so powerfully. And I was like, this is amazing. And then I felt almost like this holy fear come upon me. And I started to, to shake and I started to get a bit freaked out almost, but I felt God just say, it's okay. I'm just giving you right now. I'm encountering you right now. And I'm showing you some of the things that you need to deal with. And in that place, I just started to give stuff to God, give stuff to God, give stuff to God. I just said, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry for this. Lord, I repent of that. Lord, I, I'm sorry how I spoke to my wife there and how I spoke to my kids here and what I did there and all the things that just started to come to my mind. And as I went through that process, the Holy Spirit hit me so powerfully. I felt the anointing drop in that place. And what happened for me is I had a deep encounter with God that shook me and changed me. And it was in a place of just worship and prayer like this. So I'm gonna pray, find a place somewhere in this auditorium if you wanna stay here, seek God, pray for as long as you want. And I believe the Holy Spirit's gonna encounter you in this place. Lord, I just declare for every person here, Lord, I declare right now encounters I declare that You would bring revelation. I, dec I declare that the spirit of understanding and wisdom would come upon us right now in Jesus' Name. And Lord, I declare, Lord, that this place right now would be, would be a place of encounter, would be a place for Your anointing and Your Holy Spirit to rest and move through here. And God, I declare, Lord, as some of us get on our knees, as some of us just walk around and pray right now, I declare, Lord, that there would be a shift inside of us. I declare, Declare, Lord, that You would begin to lift the prayer inside of us, lift our heart for worship, lift our heart for prayer right now in this place. And I declare, encounter every person here, Lord, right now in Jesus' Name, I declare, bring revelation, bring encounters in Jesus' Name. Amen.